Hi Felters and welcome, my name is Philippa and in today's video it's going to be a fun one. I am going to set up my stand all ready for a craft fair, it's my first one of the year coming up. I've got a couple of new display stands I want to practice and I thought I would show you exactly what I do in case you're thinking about doing your own craft fair. Let's get started. <laughs> So here's my office, here's everything I've got to move and we're just going to be through here and I'm going to set up just in front, I've moved all their toys so they're probably, their toys are all down the end here now, but yeah I'm going to set up the table just here and I'll do it in fast motion and then we'll talk through my setup. So there we are all set up. Now that took me well over an hour because I have some new things and I had to rearrange and a couple of things from last year that I have have been ditched as well. So I'll just talk you through it. Um, let's start with, right, number one, first off. Now I do have two videos on my channel going through craft fairs in much more detail. I will link at the end, but this is just a quick video to show you my new setup and what's changed um, and I'll talk you through a couple of the old things. So this um, banner cost me about £35 online. Um, normally I, I designed it myself so I managed to do all the artwork myself and that brought the price down. I have to say when people walk past they quite often their eyes are drawn to that because they don't understand needle felting and they kind of look at that first. So I would have to say definitely get one of these it um sort of uh, folds down all the way down into there wherever you go try and get a stone or something big to sort of weight it down and take some string and you can tie it to the edge um if you're near the edge of the place that you're in if you can tie it down that's great otherwise there's a strong chance it might fall over take uh, something heavy to put on the bottom if you can't but i go to this place it's a farm and i just uh, they've got lots of stones out the back so display things I've still got my boxes and I've staggered them quite a lot and I've put two more in this is new now I always find it really really hard to felt and anywhere at my table because the table is so full and also I find it hard to concentrate on felting as well because I'm constantly up and down talking to people this was suggested by one of my patrons because she does it um Wendy I think it was and this is fantastic and it's much better and I think it shows people exactly what's what and I just bought this tablet only and solely for this reason and it cost me just under a hundred pounds which is a lot of money but if you've got a tablet at home that you can use that's great you probably wouldn't have to buy one but I think it just um, highlights and demonstrates what needle felting is a lot quicker than me trying to sit there um, these are well they are my care instructions but um, I just put them there because they look a bit more professional then I've got my cards I always have my cards out a lot of people still like to take cards but along with that, I have got this. Now, this did cost me about £36. It's a foam board. I designed it on Canva. So you get your code on Canva. And I designed the layout and I printed it on Vistaprint. And it's fantastic. And it's also great because it tells everybody I do other things such as YouTube channel, online courses, Patreon and things like that. 
and it works um we've tested it out so I'm, I'm really pleased with that lots of places have it now so i really please please i'm a bit more up to date with things i also have this which is a warning about these are not for children they are adult ornaments basically another thing that i've changed are my labels so i've put um, a little sticker on with felts by philippa and then i've written the price on i like to name everything because i just think that's easier people then go oh can i have hugo or humphrey or a couple of names have been repeated with the highland cows because i've literally got so many um, I've managed to stack these up higher so I've really gone for the height and I do feel they're quite stable enough um, I do put little nails in the corners to sort of hang the heads on and that really helps with being able to display them um, but this is the most fullest if that's a word uh, I've ever had a table going to a craft fair so I'm really really pleased with it I really like uh, the logo colours on all the stickers. I think that's mu much more professional looking. And then this was my new stand. Oh, I haven't put more flowers on. I've got lots of flowers as well to put on. Um, this was my new stand just to be able to put some of the Highland cows on because I always end up putting them all on the table and it's fine, but I have so many and this has managed to stack. I could stack quite a few more in there, but um, I just think it's nice and it highlights things and I like having the extra area on top to put the big items because you'll find if you can get things at people's eye level it draws them in and then they see it and they come over and they have a look so I like to put my nicer items at the eye level and it will draw people in and then I always have tablecloth a nice long one so you can hide all your stuff underneath the most important thing of the day is when you put your tablecloth on is make sure it's level before you stack anything on it. And my one's quite long, uh, so I just tuck it under at the edge here. You don't want anyone to be catching it with their feet and tripping over. And then I always put a little bit of bunting down here. I think it looks nice. I personally don't put a sign down here because once you get people round your table, they can't, no one else can see it. I find that that sign in the corner is much, much, much bigger and much better. And also you can move it around. Sometimes I haven't got room for it to be at the side there. So it ends up going just here. And people, if I put it here, people can still see it. So it works well. Now I haven't set up anything behind, but let's just go and have a look. Normally I will have my chair and I have another smaller, well, it's a very small little table that um, I open up and I put, let's just show you, the tissue paper goes on it and the, box, the um, uh, bags go on it and I put them open and I put a care leaflet in and I have sort of three bags ready. I'll try and get a quick shot of that from one of my craft fairs before. So here's um, behind one of my stalls at a craft fair. I've got my chair, cushions, bag, and this table is great. It's a real game changer, tissue paper out. The bags are ready, so you fold up the item in the tissue paper, pop it in the bag and hand it over. You try to be as quick as possible um, with customers, and I have three ready in case there's several in a row. But I think that's mostly it for the new stuff. Oh yeah, and his tail is covering up the visa sign, most important. And I have an iZettle. There's lots of sort of card machines that you can use these days. I normally take between, I know if I have between 30 and 40 items, I have enough for a craft fair and I normally put absolutely everything out. And then as the day goes on, if I sell stuff, I just spread things out. Now the place I go to is a really good craft fair. I normally sell between, I think the lowest was 190 and the highest was 600, just over 600, which is an awful lot. If I go to a craft fair and if I was to sell anywhere near 100 pounds, I know that that's a good craft fair. Sorry, he's really covering. <laughs> I might have to move that around because people need to see that sign. Um, but if I sell over 100, I consider that a really good craft fair. Another thing to say is I always take photos of the exact layout. I will take an overall picture and then I'll take picture here, picture here, picture here. So on the day, you can look at the pictures because I can tell you, I can promise you, you will get there and you will not remember what your layout was. It also helps to know what items are going where to get the big things because basically on the day you get there and you have to put most of your, I unpack the boxes, everything travels in these boxes and sort of I unpack it all and I put it on the little table I have and then the front here and it's a big 
jumbled mess. So if you get the big things done first, then you can start re reorganizing the little things as well. Um, and if you've got your photos, it really, really helps. And it just calms me down on the day. And on the day, it does take me a good, I have an hour set up normally um, because I have done quite a few but an hour is is fine for me to unload I know where I'm going and I know what the place is like so definitely take your photos I've just found and added in my greenery so there's a little bit there there's a little bit there the colors sort of come off a little bit funny and I've got quite a nice one hanging down there and then I've got the greenery around there I'm undecided does it look good I'm not sure if it's needed and it does kind of clash a bit with my colours. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Do you think I should have the greenery? I'm not sure. So there we go. That's the setup uh, for my craft fair. So if you follow my vlog, you'll find out how I do with it. And I'm going to have to put a list on because it's gone to Serafina Fibre Art now. Right. So there we go. That is my setup. So Felters, I hope you enjoyed that. I did all the hard work you got to watch. Um, it's really good to practice, so important. If you are interested in doing a craft fair, I have a video here on craft fairs in much more detail. And if you're interested in setting up your own business, especially to do with needle felting, I will list my business playlist here. If you want to know how this craft fair goes, don't forget to subscribe and you will see all the details in my vlog. Thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you again soon.